Hello and welcome back to the drag and drop inventory tutorial for Empire part 4 and let's just jump straight back into it, shall we? So in the last part of the tutorial we finished creating our custom save screen which shows some dialog on the screen whenever the user is interacting with certain items. In this part of the tutorial we are going to do a few things. One of them is to create this remove environment item function so that we can have an item be removed from the environment when we are picking it up into the inventory. We are also going to make sure that each item in the inventory can be interacted with either by inspecting it or by dragging it around on the screen. So let's go ahead and create this remove environment item function first. So we're going to create a few of the lines underneath here and then we'll go in two times in the indentations like so and then we're going to say def remove environment item like so and then we're going to add its argument which we have called item like so and then inside of this function we need to make sure that we are deleting the item that we have passed into this argument and for that we're going to say item dot destroy like so so we are calling the destroy method for this sprite object which is going to tell the sprite manager to destroy this sprite so the sprite isn't deleting itself but is telling the sprite manager object to delete it and now we also need to make sure that we are removing this item from the environment sprites list as well as the environment items list so to do that we are going to say environment sprites and then we're going to use the pop method for a list so we're going to say dot pop and then inside of him we're going to find the item that we want to remove and to do that we're going to use the index method for a list object which is going to find the index position of a specific item in the list by giving the function the value that it should look for so to do that we're going to say environment sprites dot index and the value we're going to look for is going to be the item that we passed in to this item argument so we're going to say item like so so now we're finding the correct index position of the item that we want to remove from the environment sprites list and then we're passing that index value into the pop method and then underneath this we're going to say environment items dot pop and then we're going to do the same thing but in this case the environment items list does not contain sprites but it contains the actual names for each of these items so to remove the correct name from this list we're going to say environment items dot index and then we're going to write item dot type like so now before we go ahead and launch the game to see how this works like we are going to have to do a small correction inside of our code and that is up here in the add to inventory function where we are calling the remove environment item function instead of passing in the item variable as the value for this parameter we are going to pass in the environment item variable instead and that is because this environment item variable is actually going to hold the correct sprite item in the current iteration of this for loop that we want to remove so instead of saying item down here we are going to say end item like so so now we are passing in the actual sprite object we want to remove from the scene and not the item's name which is held inside of this item variable and then we're also going to make sure that we are redrawing the environment sprite manager as well as we have just deleted one of its items we need to make sure that it is refreshed as well so we're going to duplicate this line right here like so and then we're going to swap this inventory for environment like so so now we can go ahead and save our changes and launch the game to see how this works like. So now the first thing we're going to do is to open up the inventory so that we can see the items that we're adding to it. And then we're going to click on this key to see what happens. And as we can see, it worked indeed as the item was removed from the scene. Now let's try the lantern as well. And as we can see, that worked as well as the item was removed from the scene. So now let's go back into the code and see what else we can do. So the next thing we're going to do is to create an overlay menu which is going to show on top of an inventory item when we hover our mouse over it. And this overlay menu is going to contain two different buttons. One which is going to allow us to inspect the item closer 
and the other which is going to allow us to drag the item around on the screen. So to do that we are going to create a new screen. So we're going to scroll back down to somewhere around here and then we're going to create a few empty lines and then we're going to say screen and this screen we can call inventory item menu and this screen is going to take one argument which is going to be the inventory sprite item that we want to show the menu for so we're going to call this argument item like so now inside of this screen we are first going to add a set order property so we're going to say set order and this is going to be set to 7 and then we're going to create a frame which is going to contain this menu so we're going to say frame and we're going to give this frame the same size as an inventory slot so we're going to say xy size and then two brackets like so and then we're going to give it the width that we have stored inside of the inventory slot size tuple so we're going to say inventory slot size and then we're going to grab the width value from this tuple so we're going to add a zero instead of these two square brackets and then we're going to do the same thing for the height so we're going to say inventory slot size and then we're going to put a one instead of these brackets like so next we're going to give this a background and this is going to be a white transparent color so for that we're going to say background and then two quotation marks and since this is going to be a white color we're going to say hash symbol and then six f characters so one two three four five six and then we're going to give it a 30 percent opacity so we're going to say 30 like so next we're going to make sure that we are positioning this menu on the screen and to do that we're going to use the x pos and y pos properties so we're going to create a new line and then we're going to say x pos and since this menu is going to be positioned wherever the item is in the inventory we're going to use the items x position and y position so we're going to say item dot x and then I'm going to duplicate this line and then I'm going to rename the x pos to y pos and then say item dot y like so now the next thing we're going to do is to add the two image buttons so the first one is going to be the inspect button so we're going to say image button and then we're going to use the auto keyword to make sure that this button automatically switches from the idle to the hover image and then we're going to add the path to the image so we're going to say UI view inventory item and then present s and then dot png like so and then we're going to align this image button instead of this little menu frame so we're going to say align and then two brackets like so and this button is going to be aligned at 0, 0.0 on the x-axis and 0, 0.5 on the y-axis and then we're also going to make sure that we are resizing this button to be half of its size as we have done with all the other images for our game so we're going to say at half size next we're going to give this button two actions one is going to show a close-up of the inventory item and the other is going to hide this menu from the screen so we're going to say action and then we're going to add two square brackets like so to create a list of actions and then we're going to say show and the name of the screen that we want to show is going to be inspect item like so now this inspect item screen is going to take one parameter and that is going to be a list of the items that we want to inspect so we're going to create a comma after these two quotation marks like so and then we're going to say item is equal to and then we're going to add two square brackets to create a list and then we're going to say item dot type so the value that we are passing in for this parameter is the value for the type attribute for the item that we are passed in to this inventory item menu and then the next action we're going to add is going to be hide like so and then we're going to give it the name of this screen which is going to be inventory item menu 
like so. And now we're going to duplicate this line so that we can add another image button, like so. And then I'm going to change the file name to be use inventory item, like so. And this one is going to be aligned at 1.0 on the x-axis and 0.5 on the y-axis. So now these two image buttons are going to be aligned next to each other in the same line inside of this menu frame. And the actions for this image button is going to first of all call a function that we haven't yet created. And this function is going to help us to drag the item around on the screen. So we're going to remove this part. And then we're going to say function like so. And the name of the function that we're going to call is going to be start drag like so. And this function is going to take one parameter, which is the item that we want to drag. So we're going to create a comma after that. And then we're going to say item is equal to item as we're passing in the value for the item parameter that we sent into this screen. The next thing we're going to do is to create this inspect item screen that we are showing down here. So for that, we can go ahead and create that right under here, like so. So we're going to say screen inspect item. And then we're going to add the argument, which we can call items, like so. And now actually, since we are calling this items instead of item, we're going to need to make sure that we are changing it up here as well, like so, so that we don't get any errors. Now inside of the screen, we're going to first of all give it a model property. So we're going to say model true, like so. And then we're going to give it a set order property. And this one we're going to set to four, like so. Now this screen is going to behave much like our custom say screen, where we're going to have a button that is going to cover the whole screen. And when we click on it, we're either going to remove the first item in the items list, if there are more than one in it, or we're going to hide the screen. And then if we also have some dialog that we want to show after these items have been shown, then we're going to make sure that that is shown as well. So we're going to say button, and then we're going to give this button the xfill and yfill properties. So we're going to say xfill true and yfill true, like so. And then now we're going to give this button one or more actions. And this is going to be dependent on a condition, which is going to check how many items that we have passed into this items parameter. So if we have more than one item in the list, then we want to make sure that we are removing the first item so that the next item in the list can be the first one. And therefore that item is going to be shown on the screen. But if we only have one item in the list, then we just want to hide the screen. So we're going to say action, and then we're going to use the if function. So we're going to say if, and then len items is more than one. So as long as our items list has more than one item in it, then we're going to say true is equal to, and now we're going to remove the first item in that list. So we're going to say remove from set items, and then items, at the index position of zero, like so. And then now if this condition happens to be false, then we're going to say false is equal to, and in this case, we're going to do two things. One is to hide the screen, and the other is going to be a condition check, which is going to check if we have filled our dialog dictionary with some items. And that is because later on in our code, we're going to want to show some dialog after we have shown the secateur item specifically, so that the character can have some comments about picking that item up. So in order to make this work, we're first going to create an empty list, like so. And then we're going to say, hide, inspect item, like so. And then the next action is going to be, if len dialog, is more than zero, like so. So now if the dialog dictionary has more than zero items in it, then we're going to say true is equal to show character say, like so. So now we're going to show a custom say screen 
after we have hidden the inspect item screen, but only if the dialog dictionary has more than zero items in it. But if we don't have more than zero items in the dialog dictionary, then that means that we don't want to show any dialog on the screen after this screen has been hidden. So we're going to say false is equal to null action, like so. Next, we're going to add the background image, which is going to go behind the item that we are currently inspecting. And to do that, we're going to create a new line. And this image is going to go inside of this button. So we're going to say image. And the path to this image is items pop up. And then the file name is called items pop up bg dot png, like so. And this image is going to be aligned in the center of the screen. So we're going to say align 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, like so. And then we also need to make sure that we are resizing this image to be half of its original size. So we're going to say at half size, like so. Next, we're going to add a text displayable, which is going to show the name of the item that we are inspecting. Now in your specific game, you may have items that have several different words in their file names and you're separating these words with the help of dashes. And then inside of your inventory item names list, you are separating these words with the help of spaces instead. In such a case, in order to grab this display friendly name from this list, you're going to have to create a Python block, which is going to iterate through each of the items inside of the inventory item names list. And I'm going to show you right now how to do that. So we're going to say, Python. And then we're going to create a new variable, which is going to store the display from the name that we want to use for this item. So we're going to say item name is equal to, and for now it's going to be an empty string, like so. And then we're going to say for name in inventory item names. And now in order to check if the current name in this for loop is the name that matches this item that we are currently inspecting inside of the screen. We have to format the item's name in order to be able to see if we have a match. Because inside of the inventory item names list, we have names that are separated with spaces. And inside of the inventory items list, we have names that are separated with dashes. So in order to check if they're matching, we need to make sure that they are both formatted the same way. So for that, we're going to create a new variable inside of this for loop, which we are going to call temp name is equal to name dot replace and then we're going to replace the spaces inside of the current name in this for loop with dashes so we're going to say two quotation marks and then a space inside of that like so and then comma two quotation marks and then a dash inside of that like so so now we are replacing all of the spaces inside of this name with dashes instead and now we can check if this name is matching the current item that we are inspecting. So we're going to say if temp name, and then we're also going to need to make sure that all of the letters inside of the name is in lowercase, since the first letter for each item inside of the names list has a capital letter. So we're going to say dot lower, and then we're going to say is equal to items at the index position of zero, like so. And then we're going to say instead of this, that the item name is equal to name, like so. So now the item name variable contains the name that is the correct one for this item. Next, we're going to add the text displayable, which is going to show this name. So we're going to create a few empty lines. And then we're going to go inwards until we reach the same line as this image right here. And then we're going to say text and then two quotation marks. And then we're going to format this string to contain this item name variable. So we're going to say two curly brackets like so. And then format item name like so. And then we're going to add a size to this text. So we're going to say size and we can go with 20 and then we're going to align the text. So we're going to say align and this is going to be aligned at 
0 0.5 on the x-axis and 0 0.25 on the y-axis. And now we're going to go ahead and add the item to the screen. So for that we are first going to create an if statement and this if statement is going to check if the item we're trying to show is the lantern and if it is then we want to go ahead and grab the state for the lantern so that we can show the correct image. So we're going to say if items at the index position of 0 is equal to lantern like so then we're going to create a new variable which is going to contain the state so we're going to say dollar sign so that we can create a new python variable and then we're going to say lantern state is equal to and then to grab the state from the lantern sprite we're going to say inventory sprites and then inside of these square brackets we're going to say inventory items dot index and then lantern like so so now we're looking for the lantern item inside of the inventory items list and grabbing the index position for that and then supplying that index value to the inventory sprites list and then outside of this we're going to say dot state and then to add the image we're going to use this variable as a part of the file path so we're going to say image items pop up and then we're going to add two curly brackets like so and then another set of curly brackets like so and then another dash and then we're going to say pop up dot png like so and now we're going to format this string so we're going to say dot format so now we're going to replace the first set of curly brackets inside of the string with the string lantern so we're going to say lantern and then we're going to add a comma and add another value that we want to replace with the second curly brackets and that is going to be the state of the lantern so we're going to say lantern state like so and now we're also going to align this image on the screen and this is going to be aligned in the center so we're going to say align 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 like so and then let's also remember to resize this image so we're going to say at half size and now if this is not the lantern then we're going to say else image items pop up and then we're going to add one set of curly brackets and then we're going to say dash pop up dot png like so and then we're going to format the string as well so we're going to say dot format and then we're going to supply the value that we want to replace these curly brackets with which is going to be items at the index of zero like so and then let's place this image in the center as well so we're going to say align 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and then resize the image as well so we're going to say at half size like so now before we go ahead and do anything else i'm going to make sure that i add a pair of columns up here so that we don't get an error as i missed that before and now we're going to make sure that when we are hovering the mouse over one of the items in the inventory that this inventory item menu is going to show so we're going to scroll back up until we reach our inventory events function right here and in here we're going to do something similar to what we have done inside of the environment events function so we're going to say if event type is equal to renpy dot pygame underscore sdl2 dot mouse motion so now if the user is moving the mouse around on the screen then we're going to check if the cursor is within one of the items inside of the inventory and now since we already have a piece of code inside of our script that checks this we can go ahead and copy that and that is going to be this for loop with this if statement so we're going to copy these two lines right here and then we're going to paste it up here like so and then we're just going to make sure that we are renaming this environment sprites to inventory sprites so that we are looping through the right list 
and then we're going to say inside of this if statement rempy dot show screen and the screen we want to show is going to be inventory item menu like so and then we also need to make sure that we are sending in one parameter to this screen and that is going to be the item that we want to show the menu on top of so we're going to say comma item is equal to item like so and then we also need to make sure that we are restarting the interaction in order for this screen to show so we're going to say rempy dot restart interaction and then we're also going to break this loop so we're going to say break like so but now if we're not hovering the cursor over one of these inventory items then we're going to say else rempy dot hide screen inventory item menu and then we also need to make sure that we are restarting the interaction after hiding a screen as well so we're going to say rempy dot restart interaction and then we can go ahead and create our start drag function which is going to help us to drag an item around on the screen but we're not going to fill this function with any specific code in this part of the tutorial but we're going to continue with that in the next one so we can go ahead and create this function down here for example so i'm going to say def start drag and then we're going to add the item that we want to drag as the parameter so we're going to say item and then for now we're going to add the pass statement like so so now let's go ahead and save our changes and launch the game to see how this looks like so now that we have the game up and running again we're going to go ahead and first of all open up our inventory and then we're going to click on one of the items such as this key and then we're going to see if the menu pops up when we hover our mouse over this item and as we can see that seems to be working indeed and we can also see that we have the two buttons right here one which is for inspecting the item and the other which is for dragging the item around so now let's go ahead and try to inspect the item and as we can see that seems to be working as we get this pop-up window with the background image as well as the item in the middle and then we have the name of the item up here but as we can see it is in white color so it doesn't really stand out very much and I'm going to make sure that I change that in between this part and the next part of the tutorial and you can of course go ahead and do that straight away as well and now let's go ahead and click with the mouse and as we can see the pop-up window goes away now let's go ahead and try that again just to make sure that this is working correctly so in the next part of the tutorial we are going to go ahead and implement the drag and drop functionality for our inventory items so i thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video